So what can we expect from the market today? Let's bring in out Tony Nash, Chief Economist from Complete Intelligence. And he joins us now in our Singapore studios. Tony, great to have you with us. All right, let's start off with China from where uh, Karishma is at the moment. And we're going to see a lot of uh, economic numbers from trade, retail sales, industrial production, inflation. Um, what will they say about the Chinese economy? I think clearly it'll say that China's slowing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see export and import numbers negative this month. We'll see things like industrial production down. Remember when industrial production was close to 20%? I mean, these were the good old days, right? So um, we'll see these things dialed down quite a lot. So will sl a slowing economy in China be the new normal now? Well, yeah, I think when, whenever you have an economy that has shifted into uh, where China has shifted, it's, you know, China has matured in the places that it can mature. Uh, on the coast in the traditional manufacturing uh, zones, right? So is this already being started uh, to be digested by investors? Are they starting to realize, yes, this is what we can expect from China going forward, 65 to 7% growth? Uh, actually, I don't think most investors have digested that. Mm -hmm. I think most investors don't understand how extraordinarily difficult it is to have 7, 8, 9% growth again and again. Uh, and so, uh, again, I don't think it's, it's digested. I think people will continue to surprise when you see growth numbers, say, with a six handle on it. Uh, I think people will be surprised if that happens this year, even though the World Bank and the IMF have been saying that for months. And now you have the central bank governor trying to uh, appease the markets by saying that the correction is uh, soon to be completed in right. China. Right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what happens with that. because. Both the regulator and the PBOC in China over the past month have not had the best communications mm -hmm. policy. And things have been in inconsistent. And the problem is they're accustomed to communicating with domestic markets. Mm -hmm. And now they're starting to communicate with global markets. And there's a different way to communicate. So at, at the moment, the statements are still very disjointed. What about the disappointing numbers uh, uh, on the jobs front in the United States and the uncertainty of a potential interest rate hike from the Fed uh, later this month? Is this a concern for Asian investors? It should be, actually, because, again, I don't think the Fed has been great at communicating their intentions either. Mm -hmm. So those expectations the, or the lack of clarity as to what the Fed is going to do creates volatility in markets. So we have China creating volatility. We have the Fed creating volatility. And so these numbers are a disappointment. But there's because the unemployment rate is still at 5.1%, that's right in the middle of the Fed's sweet spot. So investors don't know. You don't have inflation up to the 2% they want, but you do have unemployment at a rate that they want it. So are they really uh, looking at the dual mandate, or is employment the driver right now? All right. Expect more volatility in the Asian financial markets this week. Tony Nash from Complete Intelligence, thank you so much.